Hey, my heads, my name is Red Jade, and I'm sure we all did a lot in 2023. You did some work, talked with some friends, watched some movies, made Super Mario Bros. Wonder, went on a vacation, succumbed to your corporate greed, and laid off thousands of your employees because you're greedy and you hate your developers. Well, you did it. You survived the year that's 13 years before 2036. Let me be the first to welcome you into 2024. I have a more in-depth video that goes over a large chunk of the games released in 1973 plus 50, including The Good, The Bad, and Gollum, but I wanted to make another video here right as 2024 starts in June of 2024, where I go over what my favorite games of 2023 were. I did not play Baldur's Gate 3, I'm sure it's incredible, but I haven't gotten around to it, please don't tell anyone. I've been playing Outer Wilds instead, and also wishing that I could forget that I played Outer Wilds so I could play it again. Also, Super Mario Bros. 2 will not be on this list. Go watch Donkey for that. I'm dumb and key. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention that I didn't beat every single game on this list. There was like a thousand billion trillion whatever games that released last year, and I also had to beat a game from 2003 for some reason, so whatever. But my opinion might change on these games. I don't know. Spider-Man 2 came out, which means obviously Mario Wonder is going to be on this list. Mario Wonder was just a really fun game. Similar to another game on this list, Mario Wonder wasn't exactly a boundary-pushing game, even though it did have some really wacky ideas that implemented to change up the 2D Mario formula, but it wasn't the most innovative game ever or anything. But it was really fun, which in the end is what matters most to me. If a game is innovative and fun, then that's double points. 8.5 out of 10. Lethal Company is probably the best multiplayer horror game I have ever played. Not only is it really fun, but it actually managed to genuinely scare me and Mitchell when we played it, and it was also hilarious, so I think it deserves to be on this list. 8.5 out of 10, but a little bit better than Mario Wonder, I guess. Amnesia may not be the most innovative and groundbreaking thing anymore, but again, this game is just really fucking good. Mixing Amnesia with some elements of Penumbra actually works really well, and I love the immersive sim elements. It's not a perfect game, but it's a damn fine one. 8.6 out of 10. Alan Wake 2. There's two Alan Wakes, and there's musical numbers. Enough said. Much stronger gameplay than Alan Wake 1, moving full into survival horror territory. It's not the most groundbreaking from a gameplay perspective, but it's still fine. The story is where it shines, which is pretty normal for everybody. Their stories are always the strongest element in my opinion, but the gameplay here is fine. 8.7 out of 10. Pizza Tower has a character named Barrio. 8.9 out of 10. I like Breath of the Wild, which is why Hi-Fi Rush is on this list. Hi-Fi Rush is a really fun rhythm game by Tango, the same devs whose previous games were not as colorful or upbeat. They made The Evil Within and Ghostwire Tokyo. And then they made Hi-Fi Rush, and it was their highest critically acclaimed game ever. What the fuck? I just wish they didn't get shut down. Fuck this industry. Fuck Microsoft. And Sony and Nintendo. Fuck all companies, actually. 9 out of 10. I liked Breath of the Wild, but I never got super into it. Oh, come on, guys. I, I said I liked it. Uh. Uh. Um. I mean, I. Uh. Oh. God. What is this? Dear Ragenade, I am going to skin you alive. Signed, a Nintendo fan. Well, that went well. Uh, oh, Alright, shut the fuck up! Thank you. I have a fucking gun. Thank you. As I was saying, Tears of the Kingdom is better. Tears of the Kingdom may just be more Breath of the Wild in some ways, but isn't that what people wanted? And to me, it's got enough new mechanics to keep it interesting. As someone who liked Breath of the Wild but never got super into it, and as I said, this feels 20 times better. 9.2 out of 10. Resident Evil 4 made out of musical numbers like Alan Wake 2, but everything else is so damn good that I don't really care. I do kind of wish that there was a musical number with... Leon and the Regenerators, but you know what? Uh, 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 that's fine. We can take a loss here and there. It's one of the best horror games ever, but now even better. 9.25 out of 10. 
Now, my number one on this list is kind of weird as it's technically not its own game and it's a mod, but it has enough content to the point where I'd consider it its own experience. But if my number one doesn't count in your opinion, forget about the number one and have my number two as my favorite game of the year which is obviously Pikmin 4. Pikmin is my favorite Nintendo franchise with how consistently great it's been, and Pikmin 4 is no exception. Sure, it may have taken 10 years to come out, leaving us 12 Pikmin fans to fend for ourselves in the wilderness, but it was worth it, and Pikmin 4 was absolutely wonderful. And sometimes it doesn't even feel like it was over 10 years ago when Pikmin 3 was released with how good this game is and how well it sticks to Pikmin's roots. Yesterday was 10 years ago? The intro to this game is pretty drawn out and does suck on replay, but it's fine the first time through in my opinion, and it doesn't take super long to get into when this game gets really fucking good. It's not the most intense game of the year, until it decides to be. This is how all Pikmin games are. They seem relaxing on the surface, and then you play them. Wait, plants are real? Ah! Pikmin 4 is incredible and the best in the series so far in my opinion, and it easily gets a 9.3 out of 10. What other game would let you assemble an army of 100 little freaks to go fight a giant fucking dog? Certainly not my honorable mentions! Bramble the Mountain King, 8.3 out of 10. There's a few clunky moments that hold this game back for me, but the storytelling and visuals make this game a great experience. Dredge, 8.2 out of 10. I feel like certain things could have been more fleshed out, and the overall Lovecraftian horror could have been a little bit more involved. But this game was really nice to play. Slay the Princess, 8 out of 10. I did have some problems with it, but it was a great game overall. Final Fantasy 16, 8.1 out of 10. Bear in mind, I didn't fully finish this game, but what I've played is great so far. But I enjoyed the games on my list more. This could change though. And Spider-Man 2, I guess. 7.5 out of 10. I'm sure that'll go down well. Oh hey, some mail. Dear Ragenade, I'm going to skin you alive. Signed, a PlayStation fan. Went about as well as I expected. I went back to the Spider-Man games on the PlayStation, and they're not honestly as good as I remember. They're still good games. I'd still give the first one like an 8.5, Miles Morales an 8, but there are a lot of issues I have with them. Spider-Man 2 is still a good game, but it feels weaker than the other two in my opinion. And also they made the gadgets lame. This game was worse just because of that. No, I'm not including Starfield here. Fuck that game. 5 out of 10 for the game itself, 4 out of 10 for being so overhyped by Bethesda as some groundbreaking game when it just wasn't. I'm sure that will also go down great. Oh wow, more mail. Dear Ragenaid, I'm going to skin you alive. Signed, an Xbox fan. Well, all three hate me now. This is kind of a weird choice as it's a mod, but it has so much in it that it can basically be its own experience. The mod I'm talking about is a Doom 2 map called MyHouse.Wad. I'm not kidding, this Doom 2 mod changed what I thought games could be. MyHouse.Wad may seem super basic on the surface, but trust me, this shit gets fucking wild. Please go play it and play it blind. It's one of the greatest gaming experiences I have ever had. Just make sure you play the PK3 and not the actual WAD file, you'll see why. But this mod is truly incredible. Go play it. Actually, maybe I shouldn't be talking about this mod. I shouldn't be showing this to people, so people have no idea what to expect. Hold on. Stare directly at your screen. Let me get the Mind Eraser Mushroom. Alright, I need to erase their memories from the past 30 minutes, okay? Hey, look at this Mario Mushroom right here. This is so cool, this is like a Mario Mushroom. Alright, shouldn't remember anything for the past 30 minutes now. Um, the game of the year was like Baldur's Gate 3 or something. I feel like the flash might have gone in my eye from the camera when I reflected. I feel weird. Uh, uh what? Why am I recording? When did I start recording? Huh? What? What? Uh, wait, wait. What is this document that's open? The best games of 2023. Huh. Outer Wilds. Game of the year of 2019 and every year since. I mean, I guess I'll upload this video. It'd be funny, because I don't have no context. I, I mean, I don't... 
I, apparently, I've been recording for a while. I don't, I don't know. Is this a mind eraser mushroom? Hold on. It is. It's kind of warm. Like it was just used. But, I mean, I, I didn't use it. So, I don't know why it's warm. You're not supposed to use it twice in a row. I mean, everyone knows that. But, man, maybe it was because it was on my bed. At one point, probably. Or, I mean, actually, it was right next to something that was plugged in. So that's probably what it is. I mean, I didn't use it. Alright. Mind Eraser Mushroom. Erase my memories from March 29th to today because that's when I started playing Outer Wilds, I think. Alright, I'm ready. That didn't even work.